Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for tuning in to another tip slash tutorial video from me. I know it's been a while since I've done one, but this new year I promise I'm gonna be more consistent with it. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the purpose of a rehearsal, what a rehearsal is, and some things that you should be trying to achieve in your rehearsal. Now I'm gonna be using the example of a uh, vocal rehearsal that I did with a famous artist named Kayla Brianna. It was for the ATL Live in the Park event and she wanted to do a cover of Killing Me Softly by the Fugees as well as an original song called Confuse. So in this video I'm going to give you the definition of what a rehearsal is, tell you the purpose of a rehearsal, what you should be doing before, during, and after rehearsal, and then give you my personal experience on this particular example that I'll be showing you in this video. So before we continue, make sure that you give me a big thumbs up on this video, um, subscribe, and also hit that bell notification so you'll be notified each and every time I post a new video. So throughout this video, I am going to be referring to my little notebook because I took notes on the subject. I like to take notes. It keeps things more structured and it keeps me, you know, so I'm not running off on a random train of thought. But anyway, I want to start off with the purpose of a rehearsal. So the definition of a rehearsal is actually a practice or trial performance. So that means you're going to do a run through of everything that you expect to do at the show the way that you want to perform is the way that you should be practicing with your rehearsal. That goes for music, that goes for dancing, that goes for speeches, that goes for plays. Everybody has to rehearse. It's not an exclusive thing for one group of entertainers. Basically, everybody in some facet, they will rehearse. You will rehearse in some, in some capacity. Before your rehearsal, I basically want you to think of who, what, where, when, why, starting with the who. Who is going to be rehearsing? Is it you by yourself as a solo artist? Is it you in a group of three or four people? Is it you in a dance group? Are you with a band? Or is it a band and dancers and backup, and backup singers? Basically, how many people are going to be rehearsing for your rehearsal session? The next thing you wanna think about is what are you rehearsing? Are you doing one song? Are you doing two songs? How many songs are you going to be doing? How much total time is your set supposed to be? Is it supposed to be only two songs? Is it supposed to be a 15, 20, 30 minute set? Who knows? Are you rehearsing just music or are you rehearsing dance steps? Or are you rehearsing both? Or are you rehearsing an entire run through of a show that is how you're going to introduce yourself to the audience, how you're going to perform the songs, what you're going to say in between the songs, which ideally, again, you want to rehearse and practice the way that you are going to be performing. So your rehearsal should be as if you are already in front of an audience on stage. So one is who is rehearsing, two is what are you rehearsing, and three is going to be when are you going to rehearse. So this is the time and a day, the date, and the time of day that you need your rehearsal to be or that you would like to schedule your rehearsal to be. So you wanna think about when it's gonna be a good time for you, for your entire group, for your entire setup, uh, everybody that's gonna be involved in your show. When is gonna be a good time for you all to rehearse? What time of day? How long is everybody available to rehearse? You need to think about that as well. Um, I'll get into a little bit more detail about this, but my personal rule of thumb which is also something that I should do a better job of. I honestly don't do as well as I should. I believe that you should practice for 10 times the amount of time that your show or your set is supposed to be. So if you have a 15 minute set, multiply that by 10, that's 150 minutes, that's almost three hours. What is that, two and a half, almost three hours of rehearsal time. So if you have a 15 minute set, you should be rehearsing for a minimum of two and a half hours, three hours minimum. So once you have those first three things figured out, who is rehearsing, what are you rehearsing, when are you rehearsing, and for how long, the next thing is gonna be obviously finding a space that's going to accommodate your rehearsal needs. So if it's just you, it's obviously gonna be a little bit easier for you to find spaces to use. If you're starting out, maybe you don't have a lot of money, you could always rehearse in your room. Personally, the way that I set up my room, I always leave a certain open space so that I always have 
a place to move around freely, whether that's for exercising, honestly, because I like to exercise at home, but it's also a great idea for rehearsing. Especially if you want to save money and you don't want to go out and have to feel like you need to rent uh, some fancy rehearsal studio, it's okay to rehearse just at home as long as you understand all those things. Honestly, being at home, you just got to make sure that you have the discipline to actually stand up and rehearse your stuff. I know for me sometimes it actually gets a little bit difficult because I can get distracted by my phone, I'm on Instagram, I'm on my computer watching YouTube videos instead of being productive and making a YouTube video or recording my rehearsal. Um, but starting off at home, if it's just you or a small group of people, if it's in your room or even um, the garage of your house, you can do that as well. But ideally, make sure if you can get your hands on a mirror, a big enough mirror that you can see full body length or at least from the hips up or the waist up it's a good chance for you to see how you look when you're performing, to be able to see how certain movements are gonna come off to an audience. And if you're singing, it's a good opportunity to watch yourself singing in the mirror. So if you don't like the way you look saying certain words, it's a perfect opportunity to pick out, all right, when I say this word, instead of holding my mouth like this, I'm gonna hold my mouth like this. I don't even know if that was two separate expressions, but you get the idea. You're basically going through and picking everything that could be better and turning it into a great performance. So if you're rehearsing by yourself, a space could be your bedroom or your garage. If you are rehearsing with a big group of people, it's you and a group of three or four, it's you and your dance group, or it's you and a band, or you, a band, some dancers and some backup singers, then you might want to invest in a big rehearsal space. Um, you can do a simple Google search for dance studio, rehearsal, space, rental, those kinds of keywords. I think you'll find a decent studio rental for anywhere from $15 an hour, probably up to $100 an hour, depending on the caliber and the name of the rehearsal space that you're going for. But most of these places, they're going to be in warehouse looking areas. It's a very nice size room. It's already gonna have mirrors along every side of, uh, of the room, at least on three walls of the room, I would say, so that you're able to see yourself from all different angles. If you're in a rehearsal studio that caters more towards singers and vocalists, then they'll already have a sound system set up for you so you'll be able to hear how you will actually sound in a microphone with your voice coming through speakers, as opposed to just dance spaces that don't have a microphone set up but they do have a sound system um you wouldn't be able to hear what your full performance would be like so keep that in mind what are your needs for your rehearsal space if you're a singer then you'll need microphones if you're a dancer maybe you want a particular kind of surface for your dance floor something that's going to be similar to the same material as the stage that you'll be performing on um the benefit of having that rehearsal space is that you can actually block off the space that you think you'll need for your stage, if that makes sense. So again, I say practice the way that you want to perform. And when you're in these big rehearsal spaces, you can actually look at, all right, the stage is going to be about this far. So I need to make sure I'm walking this distance and I can only go up this far from the stage. I can only go back this far because, you know, you want to make sure you're keeping the dimensions of the stage in mind when you're in these rehearsal spaces. For the actual rehearsal, you should book your rehearsal time at least 24 hours in advance. Um, and you may even have to give a deposit for these rehearsal spaces if you choose to rent a place out. But you wanna make sure that you show up 15 to 20 minutes prior. Why? Because you wanna make sure that, you, that your reservation is good to go. And you wanna make sure that you're getting settled, you get all your stuff set up, you have your water, maybe you have a few snacks, Put everything into place get your music set up the people who prepare the room for you they may need you to do a few test runs to make sure that the sound system is the way that you want it to sound um, and basically to help you have a smooth rehearsal session if that makes sense so showing up 15 to 20 minutes early so that you can actually start rehearsing actually get into the rehearsal at your start time i think that's a good idea it's definitely what i would recommend so now back to the point that I was making earlier in the video where I believe that you should practice for 10 times longer than what your show time or set time is supposed to be. So I use the example of a 15 minute set. If you know you have a 15 minute set, 
multiply that by 10 that multiply that by 10 that's 150 minutes that's almost three hours now in my personal opinion it's better for you to spread out those rehearsal that rehearsal time versus doing a big chunk one or two days before the show now obviously it's going to depend again on uh, if you are rehearsing by yourself, obviously it's a lot easier to govern yourself when you have free time and how often and how long you can rehearse for. Um, there's a benefit of getting a big rehearsal space for a certain block time of maybe four to eight hours if you are working with a large ensemble of people, a band, dancers, backup singers. In my opinion, ideally it's better to spread out your rehearsal days, but if the schedule doesn't work for everybody and only one day at a particular time for a certain block of time works, then obviously go with that. But going off of that 15 minute set, you got three hours. Let's say your show is on a Tuesday. You should be practicing for at least one hour for three days, Monday, Sunday, Saturday. Or if you wanna do even a little bit more at a time for 30 minutes a day, then let's say your show is on Saturday, you should be practicing, was that, six days? So that's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, six days. The reason why I suggest that you do a little bit of rehearsal each day is because it takes off the pressure of having to get everything right a day before the show or a couple days before the show. And it gives you more time to work out all the kinks and the changes that you might come across um, when you're going through these rehearsals. So basically what you're doing in the rehearsal, you're combing through every little piece of your song, every little piece of a speech or a dance, and you're perfecting each part. I say when you're able to run through the entire set or an entire song or an entire part smoothly three to five times, then you know you've done a great job with your rehearsal. You have time to fix any mistakes, rearrange any part of the song if you want to, decide if you want to sing something differently because maybe the note is not working for you so well. And it also gives you time to prepare for any mistakes you might make. The example that I like to use is uh, for my song, Needed Me. I did a remix to Rihanna's song, Needed Me, and before a show, I noticed that every time I practiced, I was always mixing up her lyrics with my lyrics. So what I did was, for two weeks, I made sure that I practiced in my mind because for some reason I knew I was going to mess it up. I just kept practicing that one area where I knew so that if it happened during showtime that I made the mistake I was anticipating, I wouldn't get flustered and lose my spot in that performance. I would still be able to go on, you know what I mean? So, you know, having more practice time before your show date, it allows you to anticipate certain obstacles and figure out how you want to maneuver around those things. All in all, your rehearsal should be a judgment-free zone. Whether you are rehearsing by yourself or within a group with a large group of people, um, you want to make sure that it's comfortable. You want to make sure that you're forgiving of yourself, forgiving of the people that you're rehearsing with because everybody is here to make sure they are correcting those little imperfections that they may see in their own performance and you just want to make sure that you're giving constructive criticism and not tearing yourself down for messing, up, for messing up a step or for saying a phrase wrong or getting a lyric wrong. And you don't want to bring anybody else down who may have missed a step or missed a couple of words or didn't do a pose. I don't know, whatever it is you're rehearsing. But you want to make sure that you're giving honest, constructive criticism on how to make those little imperfections better, how to avoid those obstacles, instead of downing yourself, judging yourself, downing the people with you, judging the people with you. Rehearsal is all about showing those imperfections and trying as hard as you can to get rid of them. So everybody should be on the same page as far as we just want to get better. So definitely don't judge one another. Again, always have that constructive criticism, always stay positive and really just try to make it as fun as you can. Um, you don't want it to be a bad experience, obviously. And I feel like I'm being very redundant saying that, but it should be something that's fun because this is your craft. This is something that you should enjoy doing. And although the process is not always as glamorous as many people would like it to be, um, you got to be able to enjoy every bit of the process. So there is that. So after rehearsal is done, of course, you're going to pack up. You're going to go home. Make sure you drink plenty of water for, um, within the day or days leading up to the show so you can be fully hydrated. Make sure you're eating clean so that you will have 
good energy when the show comes around. Make sure that you're well rested so you don't forget any of the rehearsal that you did. So you don't forget the steps. So you're not moving, I don't know, slow or moving as though it's such a hassle to, to do this performance. You spend all that time rehearsing, make sure you get the proper rest. It's okay to rest. You don't have to kill yourself um, to make this thing perfect. Part of the rehearsal, in my opinion, is being able to rest, make sure you get your water, make sure you're eating properly so that you are completely fresh for the show and you can give your best performance. Other thing you wanna do after rehearsal for the day of your show you want to plan out your day. Let's say my show is going to be about three or four o'clock. Well, I'm going to make sure that I wasn't out too late the night before, make sure that I had enough water the day before, make sure that I'm waking up when my body wants to wake up, but still not, you know, <laughs> not at a time that's going to cause me to miss um, a meal or to miss sound check or something, obviously. But, you know, make sure that my body gets the rest that it needs. I make sure that I eat a good breakfast that morning. I make sure that it's just a stress-free day. Um, I'm spending the five or so hours before the show to take my time with my hair or my makeup or my nails. I'm running through any last-minute things really quick. No pressure, though, because, again, this is your craft. This is what you say you love to do. You want to be able to enjoy it. So there shouldn't be that much pressure um, on the day of your show. Of course, just before you hit that stage, it might there might be a few jitters that you have to get over, but that's completely normal. Um, yeah, so what you do after rehearsal, in between the time of the final rehearsal and the show time, it's very important. It's going to play a major role in how well you perform on show day. So as far as my experience with this uh, rehearsal with Kayla Brianna, like I said, we were working on a cover for uh, Killing Me Softly. I was background and we were working on her original song called Confused, which I'm going to also link in the description box as well as the Needed Me remix that I did. I'll link that in the description box below. So be on the lookout for that. But um, overall, I really enjoyed myself. I actually got considered for that role um, because my a guy that I work for that I engineer for he knows Caleb Brianna's manager he recommended me to you know be a part of that gig the rehearsal itself I thought was a lot of fun the guy that I was rehearsing with I don't remember his name but he had really good energy and we were both just kind of like all right we luckily knew the song killing me softly already but when we got to that rehearsal, that was our first time hearing her song Confuse. Um, or maybe, like, I had just heard Confuse maybe a few hours before because her manager sent us that song, like, maybe the night before or the day before. And I tried to listen to it all throughout the day. But um, the rehearsal itself was fun. There was one note on Killing Me Softly that I just kept messing up. It was like I could sing it when we weren't singing together. But then as soon as we all sang together in unison, I was forgetting the note, even though I knew it in my mind. And I, I was getting really frustrated with that. Um, something, a place where I went wrong. I didn't end up getting booked, neither did the guy. Um, you can actually look up the video for ATL Live in the Park with Kayla Brianna. She had different backup singers, which it was disappointing. But all in all, the whole experience was fun. And I was thankful to have been considered for the position anyway, so it wasn't that bad. But I think where I messed up in a rehearsal, I am an artist myself, but I like to think that I know how to stay in the background and not have too much attention on myself. But where I was going wrong, she has a very soft voice. My voice is much stronger. I was having a hard time matching her softness if that makes sense so my voice was coming off as very overbearing compared to hers and my background notes often overshadowed what she was singing so even though I was thinking in my mind well they could just turn my microphone down and it won't be that bad within the rehearsal I should have been more mindful that I don't need to sing over her and also I think because I wasn't getting the note as quickly as she wanted maybe that's why I didn't get booked as well um but yeah, like I said, but yeah, like I said, it was an overall really good experience. She was very nice. Her manager was very nice. The rehearsal was two hours long. Uh, it would have only been two songs. 
So let's see, if we go by that rule of thumb, that's two times 10, 20 minutes. No, wait, two songs. Let's say 10 minutes, so 100 minutes. So six, 12, yeah, hour and a half is what we should do. We did a two hour rehearsal, so hey. Um, another reason why I think we probably didn't get chosen is because we didn't get to practice with the band. The band didn't fly in until the next day. And basically, the day after that was the show. So that's why, and she was from LA out of town, so it was hard to coordinate everyone's rehearsal time. Was I? It was a very last minute booking um, for this gig. I had to work, of course. I couldn't get people to cover my shift. Um, maybe I should have just called out, honestly. But yeah, her band, she flew in from LA like two days before the show. The band flew in one day before the show. So me and the guy didn't even get to rehearse with the band. My uh, suspicion is that they flew in the other background singers that she used in LA, but I don't know. That's just my thought. But um, again, and this, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm very thankful to have had the opportunity to work in close vicinity with Kayla Brianna um, and even be considered for a position of backup singer for her. So, you know, she's been on the, uh, the TV show Star. I believe she's a regular character on that. But um, she's she's the real deal. I had to do some research on her because I hadn't heard of her before this time. But um, yeah, honestly, I was just excited for the opportunity before even knowing who I was singing for. It was a chance to sing and get paid. So it's a no brainer there. But overall, good experience. Um, I hope you like this video. I hope the breakdown that I gave you of what a rehearsal is and what you can expect during a rehearsal and the examples that I showed you in all the clips that I gave. I hope that that helped you to get a better understanding for your future rehearsals. I'm going to link other rehearsal videos that I've done as well. Um, just solo rehearsals. It's going to be dancing stuff that I used to do. They are old, so please be kind. I'm going to link those old rehearsal videos down in my description box below so you can see um, that rehearsal is not all perfect. It's going to be kind of messy. It's going to be kind of all over the place. That's the point of rehearsal. So, uh, you know, when you are doing your own rehearsal, don't be too harsh on yourself. But definitely check those out. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you saw, please give me a big thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. If there's anything, any topic you would like me to address, you can always comment down below in the comment section or you can email me at info at LexiATL.com. After you hit that subscribe button, make sure you also click on the notification bell to be notified each and every time I post a new video. But again, my name is Lexi. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace.